Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Patty Giarusso, and this is Let's Talk Pets on Society Bites Radio. Today, we welcome to the show Rhonda Eldridge from the Community Pet Project. And the Community Pet Project is an all-volunteer 501c3 charitable organization, and it was formed here in Florida in Hillsborough County and serves Hillsborough County homeless population. And uh, many of the local rescue volunteers in the Hillsborough County area were encountering the homeless people and at-risk people who are desperately trying to care for the pets that they loved, but were having problems doing that. So the Community Pet Project was um, developed to help the people because for many of these people, the, the pets are really their only reason to keep moving forward and survive and survive the despair of their current situations because you never know what causes someone to become homeless. Um, and without this community pet project, many of the pets would have to be surrendered to local shelters and they really didn't want to see this happen. So the volunteers get with the homeless population and help them come up with solutions. They help them with food, treats, toys, collars, leashes, flea preventatives, medical referrals and medical financial assistance if they have the funds available. So today we welcome Rhonda Eldridge, who is the president of Community Pet Project to the show. Welcome, Rhonda. Hi, thank you so much for having us. Sure. So tell us how you got involved with this project. I, I read about, you know, a bigger, a larger pet, homeless pet project. And and did you start because of that or from that? Or, or how did this come about? No, um, we did not do it that way. We started about um, June of 2017. Fortunately, in Hillsborough County, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department and Tampa Police Department host quarterly outreach events for the homeless to get them the services that they need. Um, one of the coordinators um, for Tampa Police Department actually lives next door to a, um, a dog trainer who volunteers with um, a rescue, and she presented the idea to the rescue that we attend. So the volunteers for the rescue attended the first outreach event, and it was just overwhelming. We were not prepared for what we saw or the needs that we encountered. So we decided to continue to going quarterly. About September of that year, the rescue decided to incorporate community pet projects, so we became a 501 under the um, umbrella of the, the rescue. The following June, uh, the volunteers were notified by the rescue that um, we had just gotten too big. We had to, there was just too much need, and they wouldn't be able to sustain us any longer, so they were going to cease doing business. And so June of 2018, we incorporated on our own. Mm. Okay. Now, you know, the statistics tell us that there's over 3 million Americans who are homeless, and it's not a huge number of homeless people who have cats and dogs, but it is it is a lot of people, and we know that they do need help. So why don't you tell us, you know, what are some of the things or some of the stories that um, stand out to you that really help you make a difference for them? Well, we have attended the quarterly outreaches for almost two years now. Um, year to date, from the beginning um, with the rescue to date, we have helped over 611 pets wow. in two years. Um, and a lot of people have more than one pet, so it's not that many owners, but that many pets we've helped. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, And we help anybody, not even if they're homeless, but if they're at risk. So one of my favorite stories is during Hurricane Irma, a lady found two dogs running down the street. And she took them in, got them taken care of through the hurricane, tried to find their owners, um, did the microchip, the whole thing, couldn't find anybody. Finally decided she was going to keep them, took them to the vet just to get their vaccinations, and found out little Gray was um, heartworm positive. Mm. She, had, she didn't have that kind of money to take care of Gray. Um, she's on disability, but she just couldn't afford a, you know, a $1,500 vet bill for heartworm treatment. Right. So she reached out to a dozen different organizations, and everyone told her, call here, call there, call here, call there. And, 
And I remember I was driving when she called us, and she was like, I know you're just going to tell me no. I know everyone else had just, you know, but I figured I better call. And I'm like, okay, no problem. And she's like, what? (laughs) I said, we'll cover his heartworm treatment. So Gray was actually our first one that we paid heartworm treatment for. And uh, he is (laughs) doing incredible. He survived it. He's doing great. He's finally tested negative, and so he's good to go. That's um, awesome. The other story that kind of stands out is more of a homeless person. It was a husband and wife, younger people. They had a beautiful Siberian husky and two cats. And uh, the husky, every time we saw the husky, the husky was in a shopping cart. And after, I should mention that after the outreach, in between the quarterly outreach event, they can contact us again if they need more stuff or you know, if we need to give them more food or if they need more medical or if they need finally decide they want to go through with medical. So we saw um, Luna was a Siberian Husky. We saw her quite regularly because they needed food a lot. And uh, we talked to them, asked about their options and stuff. And finally, one day out of the clear blue, they called and they said they wanted to do the right thing by Luna and wanted to get her rehomed. So mm-hmm. one of our incredible volunteers found a rescue in Florida that was willing to take Luna, and she drove her and um, to the rescue. And now she's living in an incredible, incredible place. So, mm. I mean, yeah, so you were, able, you were able to help in more ways than one in that case, huh? Correct, yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we had talked about, you know, Luna needed a lot of medical, and they just, they just kept dragging their feet. And so, you know, we came to the point where we can't continue to give you food if you're not going to, you know, get her medical con- taken care of. Mm-hmm. And uh, they kept telling us they were going to, you know, fill out the paperwork and stuff, but they just never did. So I, we were really surprised when they called and said, you know, let's rehome her. Yeah, yeah. So. Wow. Well, yeah, because, you know, one one question that you hear people ask, because, you know, I work with the lost pets, but I deal with all kinds of different situations. And one question people do ask, because we do run across homeless people who have lost their pets. And um, somebody will say, well, why does a homeless person have a pet when they can barely take care of themselves? So how do you answer that question? We will tell you (laughs) that the animals are cared for before the humans, Mm that they will feed their pets before they feed themselves. Yeah. and, I mean, and, and as a matter of fact, with Luna, we encountered Luna at a, um outreach event. And when we walked outside to see her, her dad was actually feeding, because they feed the humans there a hot supper, they were actually feeding Luna their spaghetti. Aww. Um, before they even knew that we were inside able to give them dog food. So we, we know that they feed the pets before they feed themselves. Um a lot of people do believe that homeless people shouldn't have pets. Our alternative to that is the pets go into already overcrowded shelters and face, face euthanasia. Right. Um, a lot of these people are homeless because there are no friends or family around and they don't have somewhere to go. Those pets give them a reason to live. Mm-hmm. Those pets give them a reason to wake up in the morning. Yep. You know, uh, most of those people won't survive if those pets aren't with them. I know. The one gentleman that I was trying to help who lost his cat, he called me every single... Well, he called me through someone else because he did not have right. a cell phone. And he called me every single day for his cat. And sadly, we didn't... We never found his cat. Um, but, um, you know, he he was absolutely lost without that cat. And he cared so much for that cat so I know how much that the pets do mean do mean to people you know I know how much they mean and what an important thing for you all to do to help to keep them together and keep them out of our shelters for sure it's it's um it's definitely a a pleasure for us to do that Um, and it's a privilege to meet these people because And like you said in the introduction, there are so many different reasons why a person's homeless. And it can, there's every single person you encounter has a different reason why. Some of them are by choice and some of them remain homeless by choice, but there's a lot that aren't by choice. And if they could have changed things in the past that would have prevented this, they would have. 
Yeah, yeah. So when you do the community outreach, tell us how, how does that work for somebody that may be listening that would consider trying to do what you do and duplicate it in their area? We have been beyond blessed. Um, I To really sit here and tell you how it happened, I, I don't know sometimes because I'm still in awe. But everything that we have, all of the supplies that we give are either donated to us or the money is donated to us that we purchase the supplies for. So as of right now, we have like 1,500 pounds of dog food in our storage unit um, that's been donated to us from rescues that got too much from a supplier or from dog food stores that have had um, dog food returned that they can't resell. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And then, and then we provide, since we're so well off with the dog food, when we get a next shipment, we rotate it so we'll send stuff out. So we've, we've helped um, a nonprofit animal clinic here in town. We've given them some food. We've helped a couple um, other nonprofits that help the um, lower-income people. Um, mm-hmm. And we've given them food. And there's this group of um, ladies called Grace Girls that older ladies that just go around town and when they find people they just hand them stuff and we've donated them a couple hundred pounds of dog food so that they can hand out dog food and cat food to the people they encounter um so humane society has donated some stuff to us um from deceased pets um we have people that you know i just had a lady um last night text me saying that her pet had passed away and she was finally ready and able to give away his stuff. So she was wondering mm. what to do with it. So she's going to deliver that to us. I think that's where we get a lot of our stuff. We mm-hmm. have um, made some connections with a couple of um, companies that have given us some donations. Um, and we've got an incredible donor right now that's donating all our flea preventative. That's great. Yeah. It's, it's so what, what, what types of donations would you say you need the most? What, if somebody is in Hillsborough County listening to us or surrounding community that may want to help you, what what do you need the most of, do you think, on a maybe um, right now or continual basis? Right now we're, we're doing pretty good with the food and the flea preventative. Um, we are short on collars and leashes. Um, dog toys we're a little bit short on, and we're always short on money. Um, and we also give out grooming supplies, you know, like um, shampoo, dog shampoo, dry shampoo we like a lot because it's easier for the homeless not to have to worry about water or a towel to drive the dog off. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of expensive. So I think dry shampoo is probably one of our bigger ones, that and collars and leashes, um, brushes. Um, and we even give out, um, like, the uh, waste bags and the waste bag holders just to oh, give uh-huh. them – you know, to let them be responsible pet owners. Now, talk um, about talk about the medical. What what types of things at the um, outreaches do you provide? Uh, I see that um, you know you provide them information regarding vet care and spay and neuter surgeries. Um, so, how does how does that all work? Do you work with a humane society on that, or what what does that look like we have a couple of local clinics that are willing to work with us and give us reduced rates mm-hmm. um and so like we had uh, one of our volunteers actually she has a larger dog that had em- needed emergency surgery um and we only pay 500 dollars per pet per calendar year that's our limit right now because we just don't have a large amount of financial resources mm-hmm. But um, so her bill extended over that. So we just ran a separate fundraiser on our Facebook page and we were able to get enough to um, cover the surgery and the biopsy so that she could have the results of that instead of having to wait till she got the money to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, So we do hand out the Hillsborough County spay neuter vouchers. With that, the owners, if they qualify for the voucher, they only... The only cost is $10 per pet, and the voucher will 